Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and a new video on the R56 Mini Cooper S. Thank you everybody that got involved in the comment section on the little Mini. Really do appreciate it and it's really nice to hear all of your thoughts. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. We've got plenty more videos lined up to come and I'm sure there's going to be something in there that you do enjoy. Chris is going to crack on and lap in and clean up all of the exhaust valves from cylinder one, two and four. The new valves for cylinder three have just arrived and I said to Chris, we'd really like to show that live in lapping them into the head. So he's gonna crack on now, do all the others and then we'll do the other ones live. So you can't capture a great deal because obviously Chris was leaning over doing this, but all of these exhaust valves in them cylinders, you would have seen him lapping all of those in and done a really nice job of cleaning them all up and getting them seating lovely. So he's just gonna flip it back over, get the springs and the collets back in them to hold them in. And then we're gonna move on to, so this is the original one. Guys, for those of you that may have missed video number one, and we've got two nice new ones to go in there so we're going to show that live i think that quite a lot of you did ask when we previously did this on another engine so let's crack on and get that oh, done request quite a lot of you did want to see this and you do keep asking about it so i'm going to explain it the best i can so we've got the grinding paste there for the lapping got the new valve here and that's what chris is going to be lapping in the valve seat and as you can see he's doing it there in slow motion just so you can pretty much get a gist of what's going on there. And the back of this valve will be radically different to the other new one that we've so. got there, the seat. And what we'll do once we pull it out is compare them both together and show you what it is he's actually doing there. This, it does take quite a while and Chris will start speeding up to get it done. I've just done it in slow-mo so that you can all pretty much get a gist of what's going on. So I'll wait till he's finished that and then we'll compare both of them together. Just while Chris is still doing that, I'm just gonna mention quite a lot of you did reach out about the valve stem oil seals. And I probably should have mentioned it previously on that we will be changing these. Why it's apart, I mean, it's so much easier to change them. And we're gonna do one side at a time, one bank at a time to save having two cans out and all the stuff spread out all over the bench. So we got those there. So I've come as close as I can, guys. This is the lapped valve. And this is still a new one that hasn't been touched yet. And you can see they are completely different. Now, this is actually mated up with the seat in the head. And this one, we've got to move on to do now. The original valve with the damage on it. Chris, what do we think is wrong with it? It's better if you explain it, to be fair. Probably carbon build-up. And that carbon build-up at some point has stop the valve shutting fully yeah and then because it's not shut fully you've got hot gas escaping from the cylinder uh, on detonation and that's eroded that valve away the big question really is what has caused the carbon build up yeah so we're only really guessing at that it can be it can be lots of different things it can be the wrong mixture it can be um, poor engine design and it can be, it could possibly be on number three, we've got an injector that looks different to all the others. So we're not sure about number three injector, are we, whether it's delivering the right fuel. So no. all we can do is rebuild it, put it back together, stick it on the gas analyzer and see what our mixture's like, and then go from there. We may end up swapping out the injector, um, but Fingers crossed it is just carbon build up that's built up over a period of time. We've now fully removed that on all these valves, if you look. So, they're all, we've cleaned all the carbon off. Yeah, these are all cleaned up and you would have seen previously there, Chris did clean up and relap all of those back in as well. So, 
the turbo was the thank you chris the next bit the turbo quite a lot of you was worried about whether it had shot down the turbo what was the vangs like is there any movement in there i'll try and show it the best i can i've got it stripped out and as you can see i'll try and there's no movement at all in that and all of the vangs are perfect there's not a mark on any of them and of course the other side were exactly the same as well so i'm quietly confident that nothing's gone into the turbo i've shook the cat upside down up the right way and nothing's come out of that either so we're quietly confident that nothing's made it inside that turbocharger or the exhaust system let's crack on and get this head back together just before we do put that back together i wanted to show all those new valve stem oil seals all in there now and guys even this could be a contribution towards that valve if they're letting oil pass this could be the cause of it it's best to change them they're reasonably cheap and we've got it all apart so it'd be crazy not to That's the camshaft, all back in there. It's all back together, all talked down to spec. We've now got to move on to the inlet side. I won't film that, it'd be quite tedious. It'd be like watching exactly the same thing over again. So when I cut back in, hopefully, we'll be uh, ready to put this head back on the car. So unfortunately, guys, Chris not only lifted it off, but I've had to ask him to lift it back on on his own because if I'm there helping him lift it back on, unfortunately, there'd be no record in it, so. She's on. Fits like a glove. Fits like a glove. And there we go. Now we get all the, bolt, all the bolts dropped in there and start the process of torquing them down. So I did have to pop out and get a new timing chain kit for it, oil seal, guides. It's pretty much got everything in this kit, new gaskets. And I wanted to pop out and get that. We've had it apart. Um, I believe the chain on this car was not that old. It, it looked like it had recently been replaced. All of it. And a couple of people did say this was upgraded kit because this was slightly larger than the originals. But... You can't reuse these bolts. They have to have new ones. The kit was reasonably priced. And while you've got it in this sort of stage, it, I, I think that it would be criminal not to do that. So you would have seen why I popped out. Chris did fit the head back on, got all the bolts back in, talked them all down to spec at the little drawing up here that we drew out. 
all the inlet manifolds back on, the turbos back on, everything is pretty much there now. We're moving on to the timing chain. So in the kit comes the new oil seal. So Chris is gonna actually remove that oil seal. The new oil seal actually comes with a tool. It comes in the kit. Yeah, thanks buddy, cheers. So you've got this tool there to actually put that on, which is really gonna help. It prevents it from getting damaged. If you are ever doing one of these and it doesn't come with the tool, you can use your old seal turned around on the back or the proper tools for the job. So we're gonna get on and do that. It is quite a time consuming thing. We'll see Chris pull that one out. That was a nice snug fit. So that's the original oil seal and it's gonna have a nice new one in there. So yeah, like I said, it is gonna be tight, quite tight time consuming so we're going to crack on get that timing chain all fitted back together so as you can see now that new seal is in there we are starting the process of getting the chain kit ready and you can see we've struck away we've put the chain cut the bag open and filled it up with nice clean engine oil and just massage that in really and let that soak for a good hour just so that before the car gets oil pressure it's got half a chance, everything's lubed up and built. The chain guide here, this all has to go together, but the chain has to slide in before you click these two bits together. Sorry, I'm pointing it at the wrong place again. And then you put the new uh, cog in the bottom of it. I'll just move over to the bench. Got a nice clean bit of cardboard there, and Chris is laying it all out. And getting it all ready to go. We want to try and show as much as we can. A lot of people do find it really interesting. So we've got the old one there and we just put the new one next to it, pieced it together, copied it exactly. And we actually worked out, we were trying to work out how this locates in the bottom. And then as you can see, it actually sits and runs. I can't actually demo it, there you go, you can see. So we're thinking that that actually holds it in place, ready to put this, I mean, I don't know whether to call this a bottom pulley or a crank extension. There's no keyways in this. So it is relying on obviously that timing tool being in all three of those locking positions correctly and then getting this on and the torque setting for it, I should imagine is quite high because that's holding it with no keyway. So we're gonna move on in a minute, get this slotted in there, get it all lined up and start piecing it back together. So you would have seen, this is actually the first one of these we've done. And where they're these more modern cars, they don't have any keyways. We just wanted to check and then double check again. So if you would have seen right in the end of that time lapse, well, actually halfway through the time lapse there, we talked everything down to specs. We got it all written down. So we've done that. And then Chris got on the crank and we actually give the, the engine two turns of the crank, which was a whole revolution. And then you would have seen I plop the timing tool back on there just to make sure that nothing had moved where we turned it all the way around. And you'll be pleased to know that the timing is bang on even after turning that over. So we're just going to carry on now is a case of just fitting 
a, quite a few little bits back on so the engine mount and rocker box etc so we'll crack on and get that done also the uh timing chain kit did come with a nice new yes it is here nice new gasket set for the rocker box cover so i need to get that cleaned up and get that new gasket fitted on there as well but really moving on with it and fingers crossed should have this running in this video chris right fingers crossed mate. well if we've done everything right it'll run anyway yeah, yeah no we'll um, hopefully get this running Just starting to get ready there and of course little scoreboard error we've got all new oil for it but completely forgot about the oil filter so i'm gonna have to whip out now pick one of those up in the meantime chris is just going to carry on tidying up all the little loose ends so really moved on it i know it probably looks the same as what it did lot in the previous bit of the video but all the air box is all now back on there i've been and got the oil filter that's all fitted the old ones in there nice new oil and what we've decided to do, obviously the front panel, a lot of sensors, bits and pieces are still unplugged. No intercooler on there. What we have decided to do is spin it over, give it a few spins on the key, just to build up some oil pressure. Because obviously it's been drained down, there's been no oil in there, the head's been off, it's been completely stripped. Once we've given it a few wangs over, then we'll put the plugs in, put all the coil packs in and go for that almighty fire up. You'll probably see we've left quite a lot of it off. We want to run it and just make sure it's okay before we go through the process of fitting all the front panel back on. Even the heat shield, Chris said we'll leave all that off just so that we can look out for any little oil leaks, water leaks. You know, we just want to check over and make sure that everything is perfect before we go ahead and bolt the front on. Chris, do you want to just give that a few wangs over now while I'm recording? And we just build up some oil pressure. Fingers crossed it works. Yeah, sounds all right. Is there really already? Oh, well, that's good. Right, we get those plugs in, get the coil packs in, and go for that fire up. Plugs are in, coil packs are in. <laughs> Chris, you ready? ready? Let's do it. Here we go, guys. Fingers crossed. It has solved the issue. Well, we know it would have solved it. That valve was destroyed, but here goes nothing. Yes! Listen to that. That is perfect. Leave it running for a sec. When a car is misfiring, you can hear it best out of the exhaust, but that sounds lovely. Cut it off, Chris. Cut it off. I've got an oil leak here. Well, we'll investigate that, guys, and cut straight back in. That is the oil feed. So, oh, a bit gut in there, guys. It's leaking out of this, this bit here, the actual oil feed to the turbo. And when you get hold of it, you can probably hear that. And that is the only problem we've got. The engine sounds like a Swiss watch. We're made up with how lovely it sounds. It really does sound nice. So, we have just looked up an oil pipe and the nearest one is Ashford, which is a shame because we really wanted to get this put together. And then it won't until Chris just said to me, Rob, you're never getting this done in a day. I didn't realise we'd videoed so much. So it's another nice long video. And of course, there's going to be one more on the little mini. Hopefully, we get it all fitted up, get it MOT'd and get it out for a road test. So that is going to be the end of today's video. Please, as usual, drop your comments in the comment section. Let us know what you think of the little car and let us know what you think of what we've done so far on it. Don't forget, please like, subscribe and share. Check out the merchandise if you want to support the channel. The link is in the description and we'll see you all later in the week for the next one.